Beef comes from cows which are fattened up and slaughtered. At least that's how it's been for thousands of years. But scientists at this laboratory in the Netherlands say they've created an alternative. They're about to show the world a burger made from so-called in vitro meat, taking stem cells from cows and then growing them in petri dishes until they've formed thousands of muscle fibers. You know, give them nutrients, that sort of thing, uh, and they'll, they'll flex, they'll grow, they'll differentiate into mature muscle fibers, uh, and then those muscle fibers are taken and uh, basically mixed up into a batch of meat. And this is what it looks like next to the real thing. Its supporters say besides being just as tasty, it'll reduce the need for factory farming. We're hopeful that the in vitro meat will be on the market in the next five to ten years. Certainly the commercial imperatives are there. Um, Peter's reward alone of one million dollars for anyone who can create in vitro chicken uh, it should be enough as an incentive for people to get going on this. At this traditional butcher's shop in London, they say recent health scares have seen more people turn to quality meat, and they're definitely not worried about competing with products made in a lab. I think people will tend to stay away from it to start with, uh, and they'll have to really convince people that it's one, safe, two, tasty, and three, it's beneficial for them in health-wise. If so-called synthetic meat were mass-produced, the clearest benefit could be environmental, reducing the destruction caused by much of our planet being used to grow feed for animals. A recent study by Britain's Oxford University estimated that, compared with beef, synthetic meat uses 45% less energy. They also found that it needs 99% less land than livestock, uses between 82 and 96% less water, and produces between 78 and 95% less greenhouse gases. But some green campaigners are unconvinced by the new technology. We don't know if it's going to address the kind of huge, enormous challenges we have today, things like climate change, uh, other environmental challenges, feeding the global population, and a health and obesity crisis, all of which um, require us to really kind of eat less meat and better quality meat. You know, and that's, we have the answers, and the, those are things we can start doing today. For now, it's far from clear whether the laboratory can make the leap from producing a basic burger to replicating these prime products. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera, London.